All right. We're really going to go way back to the late 90s. This is a um, Lon Chaney version of the Hunchback of Notre Dame. It's from the Universal uh, Action Figure Series from Sideshow Toy. It's been This has been sitting around a long, long time. You see, there are the other figures in this wave. Series 1, 2, and 3. Let's see if we can see a date on here. It says, uh, I'm looking. I can't see it, but I believe this is from 1999. And uh, www.sideshowtoy.com. So yeah, let's get this out of the pack and have a better look. All right, here we are. Quasimodo is out of his package. First thing, we're going to run through his accessories. He comes with a crown. You guys will recognize that right away if you remember seeing the 1925 silent film of The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Starring Lon Chaney here. Senior, this is. This is his scepter. This is a soft goods cape slash coat that's actually in excellent condition, which has been preserved by its ability to stay in its package for so many years, which is really nice. I don't care too much for the stitching, but I believe it's supposed to be like that because he was a ragtag misfit living in a church in Paris. Comes with a really cool... <clears throat> well, he's a heavy figure, too. Display stand. You can say the Hunchback of Notre Dame, Lon Chaney, 1923. I don't know if you can read that, but there is some writing in here. I certainly can't read it. I think it says 2000. 2000 Sideshow Toy. Yes. Now let's grab. I see some paint rub on the front of that nose there. I'm guessing maybe it was uh, stored away. Something heavy pushed on top of the package for a long duration. Oh well. The detail is pretty exquisite, I must say. Got a nice green cloak. You got some yellow highlights, maybe dry brushed over the top to give it that ragtag look. Very cool. I can only imagine how this must must have looked when he got done putting his makeup on because Lon Chaney Sr. did all of his own makeup and wore wardrobe. Really, really cool. There is a brown hair with a darker wash I can see inside. And I think the camera's picking that up pretty well, too. Very cool detail inside his uh, lace-up shirt there. All right, let's get the articulation out of the way. So you don't have much. Well, you, you get a little, but he didn't have much in, in real life. I mean, after all, he was hunchbacked. So you get... That much like so, and you get a swivel like so, which is very reminiscent of how he looked when he went to turn his head. Because that, that fucked up spine would do that to you. Wow, these joints are nice and stiff. So you get just a rotation in the shoulder. You get a single joint at the elbow and a wrist. You just a swivel. No pivot. You get something. There's a joint here. See that? But it's not doing much for me. And uh, this is weird. There is a hinge, a pivot there on the thigh. You see down here? You see that? And then you get a single joint in the knee. 
no rotation or movement at all in the ankle or foot and uh yeah but the paint and everything is i mean if this was just a st static piece i would be very pleased with that very cool Let's set him up there and we'll start getting him dressed up here as well there's a little piece of uh, clear plastic <clears throat> in this crown i'm gonna guess to keep it from getting squashed in its package and uh, see if I can work this out here. Yep, it's supposed to fit just like that loosely. In the movie, <clears throat> if you haven't seen it, the crown was for a joke, a joke on Quasimodo. Let's see if we can get his clothes on here. It's like dress up time. see bear with me folks all right <clears throat> I'm not gonna tie that it's on there pretty damn good so I'm not gonna worry about that let's see how well, let's have a look at his scepter here Get this on here to stay. Look at the paint on there. That's pretty wicked. Very nice detail. This is going back to 2000. Nearly 20 years ago. This looks fantastic. Uh, Lee's got a grip on this hand, so I'm going to guess that's where it goes. See if I can get his legs to stand up a little bit more. So we can actually take some of that weight from falling back like that. Bring this up like so. What a great looking figure. So colorful. So classic retro monstery. Very, very cool. Yeah, another one I'll be pleased with to have in my, um, my collection. I Joe Toy. Um. I don't know if Sideshow Toy was around much earlier than the 90s, but this is right there. This is their humble beginnings, and even back then they were showing really nice signs of progress. And at the time, its uh, leading competitor was McFarland Toys, and after what I just saw here, um, this had way more articulation than a McFarland Toy. Don't get me wrong. McFarland Toys really put out some nicely detailed static figures. I call them static because they're... They're mostly for display, not so much for moving around. But, yeah, back to Lon Chaney. This is really, really cool. A, a, a great find that's been sitting around for 18 or 19 years, and um, I'm pleased to get it out of its blister pack and show it off. So, yeah, Howlin' Wolf out. Thanks for watching.